Hey there. Today, we're going to be talking about just how to optimize your images for web use so that your websites load faster and keep people on your website so that you can convert them to a client or customer better. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Well, let's get started. Okay, so today I'm going to actually show you how you can optimize your images for use on the web. That means that you will achieve a smaller file size so that when somebody goes to your website, your Etsy shop, your whatever it is that you have for an online presence, when they go to your website and they are sitting there waiting for your photos to load, we often lose people in that period of time. So if your images load super fast because they are a smaller file size, then people will be able to stay on your website longer. They, you will grab their attention faster. They won't have to sit there and wait. And if you've ever gone to a website and you've had to sit there kind of drumming your fingers, waiting for the images to load, you know how uninteresting that really is. So when somebody takes the effort to click through to your shop or click through to your website to learn more about your services or your products, you don't want to make them wait for things to load. That means that you need to be uploading smaller file size images, but the images still have to be really good quality. So it's a fine line to walk between maintaining image quality and having small enough file sizes so that your website loads fast enough. So today I'm gonna to actually show you in Photoshop and Lightroom exactly how you can size your images so that they don't take forever to load. Let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I have selected a photo to demonstrate how to resize your images for web. I have this cropped at a four by three ratio, which is the ideal ratio for Etsy, for you Etsy sellers who are watching right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and export this photo. Now, for those of you who are watching this and wondering why my Lightroom looks like this, I use Lightroom Classic. There is also Lightroom CC, both great options. They just look a little bit different. Lightroom Classic has some more in-depth bells and whistles and things like that. So I tend to use that, but this should apply to you just as well. So I go to file and then I go to export. And then in here, I'm going to scroll down to the file setting. First, I want to make sure that I have it set at JPEG. So PNG is another option for saving images for web, but PNG files are larger. They're called lossless, which means they maintain all the quality, which means they have um, higher file sizes, bigger file sizes. So JPEG is what you want for a, a more optimized image for loading on your website. You want the color space to be sRGB. Now here in the quality section, we can reduce the quality to limit the file size. But I want to let you know that you should never reduce the quality lower than about 80. But what we're gonna do here in Lightroom instead is we're going to check this button that says limit file size two, and then you're going to limit it to 1000 kilobytes. That is one megabyte. So you don't want the images to be any larger than that. You want them to be smaller than that. This is gonna help you maintain quality so that people can still see your product or see a really high quality image on your website so that they feel confident in you as a professional, but it's going to allow the image size to be small enough that it's going to load in a snap so that people don't have to sit around and wait for your images to load. So I'm limiting the file size to one kilobyte. The resolution, it does not matter. I know this is a shock. I've talked about it on my channel a few times. I know that uh, a lot of times people think you have to save uh, 72 pixels per inch. You don't really, it actually doesn't impact the file size that an image will take up on your hard drive or on a server, but you can set it at whatever 72 is totally fine. Now you can go ahead and resize to fit. Every website is going to have different recommendations for what size it should be, depending on where you're putting it and what you're doing with it. So if we're just going to say, we're going to upload this photo to Etsy, Etsy, like they recommend that you have 2000 pixels on the short side. So if I go into my drop down menu here, I can click on short edge and put 2000 pixels. Now in my previous video, when I was talking about Etsy image sizing, I recommended 3000 pixels by 2250 pixels. Those are easy numbers to remember and they're pretty close. So I, you know, that is what I usually tell people. However, if you're having issues with file size and the images are coming out too large, large, 
you can lower the image size to be 2000 pixels along the short edge. That way you're still meeting the Etsy image recommendations, but you are creating a smaller file for a, a, for quicker loading on your website. Okay, so we have short edge, 2000 pixels, resolution doesn't matter. Uh, we have limit to 1000 kilobytes. That way we know it's going to be small enough for the web. And then we can go ahead and just export just like that. Easy peasy. And now your file will be small enough for the web. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Same photo, same ratio. I'm going to go to file and export. Export as. This is going to give me my options. And once the window loads, it's going to give you some information on what size the file currently is. So we have JPEG selected. It's at 100% quality. The image size is massive because it was the original file. Now we always want to make sure we embed the color profile. That's an important aspect to optimizing an image for the web. Embedding a color profile tells the internet what colors the photo should look, should appear as what colors should actually be included in the photo without the embedding color profile. The website is kind of up to their own devices to figure it out. Not always very effectively. So especially if you're doing product photography, you should be embedding the color profile. More on that on other videos on my YouTube channel. I will link to them in the description so you can check them out as well. If you want more information on that. All right. So here we are going to adjust the image size. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the height. So I'm going to again put in 2000 pixels because we're going with Etsy sizing here. And again, just look at whatever website you're uploading to. If you're on Shopify, the recommendation is 2048 by 2048, a square image. If it's Instagram, it's, you know, 1080 by 1080. If it's the header on your website, then that will have specific recommendations. And usually the web builder will say, you know, what size they should be. And then you just input that information in here. So we're going with Etsy sizing, recommending 2000 pixels on the short side, which is of course the height of this image. So I'm going to click enter and it's going to automatically adjust the sizing there. Now over here, I can see that the image size is currently three megabytes. So that is a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the quality to 80. Now, as I already mentioned, we don't want to go below 80% because then you start to notice some quality changes that are not desirable. You start to see some kind of artifacts and it's not very pleasant look. So we've got it down to 80%. And as you can see, the megabyte is 1.4 megabytes. So now we're walking a delicate balance here <laughs> of having an image that is large enough, but retains its quality. Now I believe, and it is true <laughs> that image quality is paramount. This is especially true when you're selling products. So let's say that you're going to sell on Etsy and you're uploading your image to Etsy and they have that fantastic zoom tool. So you want your image to be large enough that people can get a good look at the zoom tool and see all of the, the up close details of your product. So the image has to be large enough to support the zoom tool feature but it needs to be high enough quality so that when it does zoom in, it doesn't look all kind of pixelated and muddled and strange. So what I would do at this point, because I do not want to go below 80% JPEG, but it is still a little bit too large. I'm going to reduce the file size just a tiny bit. Etsy recommends this sizing as the optimal sizing. It doesn't mean it has to be the size. It absolutely can be less. So you can reduce your file size just slightly to get to a place where your image is a little bit smaller. So let's say we're going to make the height of this. We're just going to uh, experiment here, trial and error. Let's make it 1800 and then see what our file size is. So now we are so much closer. Honestly, you could probably export this just fine and it would load quite quickly, but let's just for fun go down to 1750. That is not right. 1750 and see what we're at now. Now we are at one megabyte. So 1750 is pretty close to the Etsy recommendation of 2000 pixels on the short edge. You're still gonna have lots of room for that zoom tool to expand and get a really good look at your photo, which will be excellent quality because you have it at no less than 80% JPEG. And now your image is ready to export. So to summarize, 
you can reduce the quality of your JPEG down to 80%, but no less. You should always be using JPEG because PNG, while is also suitable for some instances on the web, is a much, much larger file size and will slow down your website. So you want it to be JPEG. It can go down to as low as 80%, but no more. And after that, just try reducing the file size a tiny bit to get to that one megabyte. And that's it, guys. That's how we do that. Okay, so that is it. That is how you resize images for web use so that they load quickly while still maintaining excellent image quality. Now, before you go, I want to let you know about a brand new podcast that I have released into the world. I have been dreaming of this podcast for four years and I conducted my first interview with a guest a year and a half ago. It's been a long time in the making guys. And now it is finally here. I released the first episode last week. So please check the description below for the link. The podcast is called Bold Company and you can find it pretty much anywhere where you listen to podcasts. It's going to be releasing a new episode every Thursday. So you can check out my YouTube channel on Tuesday, the podcast on Thursday. Don't forget to hit subscribe to both so you get a notification every time I release a new episode. And I will see you right here on this YouTube channel next week.